do you think some people would say that that because gamer gators claim to care about free speech that by running advertiser campaigns against these supposedly corrupt websites was anti-free speech especially since in one specific instance the ad sub advertisers pulled out because some gamergate people emailed them um because one of the gawker writers claimed that bullying was good and he wanted to bring back bullying and I that's an that. opinion right that's 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 a guy's opinion doesn't he have the right to support bullying and advocate for people to bully people isn't that sure just he does opinion? and then he has and then you have the right to to take it out on him because it's a stupid fucking opinion but no, he has. Look, you can if you want to. Uh, Richard, I defended Richard Spencer speaking at at my alma mater, University of Florida, to such a degree that I contacted his attorney and said that that I, I as part of because that's within my region of SBJ that I would support him being able to speak at, at University of Florida. I would also support people not going. Um, but if you ban him, then who do you ban next? It's just. It's a slippery slope. It's not worth it. So, uh, no, it, you have the right to do that. The, the advisor boycotts are not an impingement on free speech. They're your free speech. You are just speaking. You aren't making the decision. The brands have to decide that they've heard your speech and don't want to do this anymore. If you're threatening the brand, that's different. If you're harassing the brand, that's different. If you are contacting advertisers and saying, do you know where your dollars are going? Do you even read this shit? Because most of them don't. And then they find out and they realize this is controversial now. It's going to cost me money. I'm going to piss off some of my customers. I'm not going to do this anymore. You haven't done anything against free speech. You've exercised your free speech. They have made a business decision. When you coerce them into that decision, that's different. You don't have the power to coerce them. You're not firebombing their home. You're not saying you're going to cut their salary. You're saying, I'm not going to buy your product anymore. That's, well, that's your right. Well, hang on, though. But like, wouldn't, these, wouldn't someone take the devil's advocate argument and say that by making it so bullying, the advocacy for bullying is a toxic opinion, and by making it cost them money, you're creating a chilling effect in the in the journalism industry, in the media industry, where now people are going to be less likely to adv advocate for bullying in the future, and that is sort of silencing speech to an extent. The market, the market silences speech. I mean, I mean, to me, if you have power to compel someone to do something, then you could possibly bully them. You do not have the power to convince Doritos to do anything. Frito Lay is going to, you don't have, the only power you have is to contact them and say, have you seen this? It offends me. I hope it offends you. And if it doesn't offend them, they're going to go on advertising and, and your speech fell on deaf ears. If they agree with you, then you just did essentially some journalism. You told them, this is why I'm not going to buy your product. Here is what was said that I don't agree with. If Frito Lays agrees with it, They'll keep advertising. If they don't, they won't. I don't see how that is harassment. I don't see how that rises to the level of delivering a death threat to Zoe Quinn. Those are two totally different things. One is ethical and is speaking truth to power, and the other is illegal and immoral.